Hi, my name is Bob. I'm a software architect and craftsman here in the UK. Now today I want to have a go at doing a TDD cutter. This is a very famous cutter called the Mars Rover cutter that we use at my current workplace, Kazoo, as part of our interview process. So I've solved this cutter kind of dozens of times. You can find lots of videos about it on the internet. What I want to do is something slightly different. I'm going to solve this cutter with a bottom-up functional approach. So in TypeScript, quite often I try to write kind of functional code rather than kind of procedural or object-oriented code. And one of the techniques I find very useful when I'm writing functional code is bottom-up design. We start off by writing the simplest units of our software, and then we slowly compose those to build a more complex system. So you'll see how that works uh, through this video set. I'm probably going to divide this video into three parts, because otherwise the parts get too long to watch and it gets very boring. Um, and in future, I'd like to do another set of videos where I tackle the same problem but with that kind of outside in approach where instead of solving from the smallest pieces, we'll start off by building the API of our system and working our way in. None of that makes any sense to you. Don't worry about it. We'll get to all of that when we get to it. So to get started, I've got an empty directory here and I'm going to use this tool, uh, dgit. Um, I use this tool a lot. All it does is it checks out the latest version of a Git repository but without any of the version history. So if I do git um, status, you'll see I'm not currently in a uh, git directory. And that's just a really nice way of quickly creating a project from a template. So I use this a lot. I'm going to install my dependencies and that should give me Jest and TypeScript and ESBuild and a bunch of things. And that works. So I've got one test set up in this uh, boilerplate repository. Um, when adding two numbers, it should like work. So let me show you what we've got here. Under my source directory, I've got this function, add. It takes two numbers, it adds them together. And then I've got um, this spec. We're adding two numbers. If we add one and two, we should get the value three. So nothing too surprising there. I'm going to get rid of all of that because I don't need any of that rubbish. What we're going to do instead is I'm going to start off by writing um, the smallest units I can of my software. So in the Mars Rover Cutter, the problem we're set is we've got these robotic rovers that we're going to land on Mars. And each rover has a position which is represented by a combination of X and Y coordinates plus a letter representing one of the four cardinal compass points. And that's the direction the rover's facing. Okay, So the direction is north, south, east or west. We won't worry too much about what north might be on Mars, because I don't know if there is actually a magnetic north, but that's a problem for another day. Um, and this plateau that we're landing on is divided into a grid. Uh, so an example position might be 0, 0, N, which means the rover is in the bottom left corner of our plateau facing north. And the eventual problem we're going to solve is we get one of these uh, inputs like this. So this says we've got a 5 by 5 grid. We've got a rover at 1, 2 facing north. We turn left, we move, 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 and we move. And we should end up at 1, 3 north. Then there's another rover, lands here, 3, 3 east. We parse this set of commands, and we end up at 5, 1 facing east. We'll get to all of this later, all of this kind of string parsing and the eventual output. We're going to start off with the smallest pieces of our software. So the behaviors of our rovers our rover can turn left, it can turn right, or it can move forward. I'm going to start off with the tests for turning a rover, um, and then we'll move on to moving. So my first test, when facing north, turning uh, left should cause us to face west. Okay, so this is our first behavior. I've got a rover, I'm facing north, we turn it left, and that should cause us to face west. Now I'm not going to create a rover type or anything like that, because I'm focusing on these smallest units of behavior. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I've got a new function, turn left. It takes a string, in this case north, and I expect that to be a string west, like so. I'm going to need to be able to run my tests, that would help. So current play cutter. Rover. Go play cutter Mars Rover. 
to make sure I need to this one here. And let's do npx just watch all. So every time I save my code, my tests are going to run automatically. That fails, and it fails because um, turn left is not defined. So when we are doing TDD, we have this red, green refactor cycle, where the red phase is we want to write a test, and we want to see that test fail for some kind of semantically valid reason. So what I mean by semantically valid reason is we want to write a test that would work if our behavior existed. So the failure I'm getting here, turn left is not defined, dissatisfies me because it's just it's just like a compiler error. I want to see this test fail because the behavior doesn't work yet. So the quickest route for that to me is I'm just going to create this turn left function. It's a function that takes any x and it returns x. So this is the identity function. So now it fails because turn left of north should be west, but is in fact north because it just returns its argument. So the quickest way we can fix that is we can just pass west back. Great. So that passes. So what we've just done, right, we've built our first test when we've hard coded this value. The reason we hard code this value here is because we want to get our tests to get to green as quickly as we can. Because in this first test, what we're doing is we're making choices about how we're going to structure our software. So an equivalent test, right? I could have written a different test completely. I could have said const rover equals a new rover. And I could have said rover.face direction.north. And then I could have said uh, rover.turn. Um, and I want to turn you, um, Blah, blah, blah. So this is bearing.north, there we go, bearing.north, and direction.left. Then I could have expected rover.facing uh, to be direction.west. Okay, this is a perfectly valid way of writing the code. If you're used to writing it at Java or C Sharp or something, this might have been where you would start off. This would be your first thought. Because I'm doing TypeScript, I'm trying to do this functional thing. This is the design choice I've made. Okay, I'm going to have a turn left function, takes a string, returns a string. This first test is a way for me to get an executable specification that shows my design choices in situ, in the real world. Okay, so we just want to get it green as quickly as possible, and then we can flesh it out. But what we've then got is some tests that prove that design really is workable. So let's come back and write another test. So when facing north, I've done that one. So when facing west, turning left cause us to face uh, south. So we can say turn left of west should be south. Let's save that. I expected south was west. So the quickest thing I can think of to make this pass is I can just say if x is equal to uh, north, then return west, else return, uh, don't even need the else do I, so just return uh, south. Okay, that's green. Our code here isn't making me very happy, but it's fine, so it passes the tests. Um, to flesh it out some more, I want to write some more tests. I can't really do any refactoring here, so we were in the red stage. We've done the green stage, now it's time to refactor. But I can't really make this any simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a new test. Before I write another test though, I don't really want to copy paste this test anymore. Instead, I want to template this test because every test I write about turning left is going to have exactly the same structure, right? So we're going to say test.each. And we start off um, with our original heading. So our first test case is the original heading is north. Our second is the original heading is west. And that will do me for now. And we want to say uh, when facing original, I need uh, expected as well, don't I? Expected like so. Uh, so expected is uh, west. When we're facing west, then expected is south. Saying when facing original, turning left should 
cause us, whilst should cause us to face expected loss. Okay. This is a function which takes an object containing original and expected. And our function is just uh, expect turn left from original to be expected. Save that. And now we have four passing tests. Because all we've done is we've um, taken these two tests, extracted a template from them. So I can get rid of these two. So they're testing the same thing. Back to two tests. And now I can come in and I can quickly add in my next test. So when we're facing south, turning left causes to face east. That's going to fail. Groovy. So uh, if x is north, return west. If x is uh, west, turn south. Turn east. And we're green. Nothing much to refactor. I don't really like the repeated if statement, so we might change that in a second. Um, if we're facing east, then that should take us back to north. Save that. So again, I'm just going to copy paste. I'm just going to copy paste our way to victory. Uh, south should face us east. Otherwise, return north. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So what I've got here, this repeated set of if statements, um, actually I want to come in and replace that with a switch. So I'm going to say switch on X, uh, case north, return west, case south, return uh, east, wonky here, case west, return south, case okay, south, return east, case east return north and then we can get rid of these four lines is that better worse you know yeah i think that's worse that was a bad move that's okay so turning left this works mm, you know what? i really don't like that i'm gonna go back and we're green okay so turning left works we tried a refactoring and decided we didn't like it, so we'll stick where we are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create myself a Git repository. I'm going to commit my changes. So turning left works. And I'm going to do that because I'm an idiot and I will inevitably screw this up. And when I do, I want to be able to go back to a safe commit. So turning left works. So the next thing we can do then, if we look at the um, problem we're given, turning left works, turning right is probably our next behavior. So we're doing this red-green refactor. Step one of red-green refactor is we want to write some red tests, ideally a red test, but we're going to cheat a bit. So we want to write a red test that fails for a semantically valid reason. So I'm just going to again copy paste my way to victory. So when we're in the red stage, we're not trying to win any awards for clean code or doing anything the right way. We just want to get our tests to green again as quickly as we can. So north is going to end up facing east. East should turn us face south. South we should end up facing west and west should face us north. And this instead of being turn left we're going to say turn right. Let's save that. That fails. Again turn right is not defined. I am just going to copy paste this whole thing because I want it to fail for the right reason, not just because I don't have a function. Turn right, that fails. So I've got four failing tests because instead of turning right, I'm turning left. Great. Quickest thing I can think of is to come in here. I'm just going to uh, fix these. So south should turn it west. Otherwise, we return north. And we're green. Okay. So we did red, we did green, that's very quick. So now we've got tests that show our behavior works. Now we're into this refactoring phase. In the refactoring phase, we want to turn our attention to the design of our code, the actual implementation, and whether there's anything we can do to clean it up. So these two uh, functions do almost exactly the same thing. They do it in a reverse order. Okay, so this one goes west, south, east, north. 
and this one goes east, south, west, north. So they're kind of like almost inversions of each other. There's this kind of sense in which we're kind of moving through a list of directions in one direction or another. So we go W, S, E, E, S, W. So they're like literal reflections of each other. So there's kind of two things that occur to me. One is I could have uh, directions like this, where we say north is in my list of directions. And then I can either turn uh, left, would make me go west, east if I turn right. And then for west, I could say if I turn left, I'm going to be at south. If I turn right, I'm going to be at north. And this would kind of work, I think. So that with this, I could say turn left is get the current direction and then return the first element of this list. That might work. The other thing I'm tempted by is a... Um, we said that both of these functions are kind of moving through a list of directions, but in opposite, like going the opposite way. I'm tempted to reify that concept. So what I want then, I want to say I've got a type um, heading, I think it's what they call it in the problem. So type heading is north, or west, or south, or east. And then I've got um, a compass, which is an array of headings. That is literally north, west, south, east. Okay, so this is the clockwise list of the cardinal points in a compass. So because it's clockwise, I'm going to start with turn right. Okay, so if turn right, we're going to say, firstly, X is no longer just some X, it is now heading, which is a heading. And we're going to say, return, let's say a const uh, index equals compass dot index of Heading. So we're going to get the current index, and then we're going to return compass index plus one. Okay, and that's going to work for all but one of our tests, I hope. Nope, that worked for none of our tests. Turning left should cause us to face right. Well, let's for a start fix the name of that test because that is turning right. And actually, I've gone the wrong direction. So that is counterclockwise. So let's change that. North, east, south, west. Okay, that's what I expected. So here we are. We are facing west. Turning right should cause us to face north, but it doesn't because we move off the end of the array. I'm going to solve that really quickly with the modulus operator. So we're going to say mod 4, and that should work. Great. If you're not 100% clear on the modulus operator, the modulus operator, um, we've got some number, uh, so say four, and we say mod four. What we mean is divide it by four and take the remainder. Okay, so there's obviously no remainder dividing four by four. If we divide five by four, then the remainder is one, six by four, the remainder is two, and so on. And we get this nice repeating property where if we say, uh, numbers 1 to 12, we do map x to x mod 4, then we should get 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we map these in our heads to compass positions. We've got north, east, south, west, north, east, south, west, and so on, and so forth. So if we're at um, west, and we move right one, we're going to end up back at north. So that works. Um, Let's quickly do uh, the same thing for turn left. So again, I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to do the simplest thing I can think of, which is compass.index of heading. There's copy paste my way to victory. Return compass index minus one mod four. Heading is not defined, that is true. Heading is a heading. 
index is not defined. That is also true. This is why we have unit tests. Okay. This works except for uh, our first case, because when we're turning left from north, this again takes us off this end of the array. To fix that, instead of doing the minus one, I'm going to add three. Now that might seem slightly obscure. If we come back to node for a second, what we can see is if we are here at north, if we subtract one, we want it to end up here, but actually because we were beginning of our array, it's taking us off the edge. If instead of subtracting one, we add three, we'll end up here on this three. So we get the same value, subtracting one and adding three when we uh, mod four. That's true for any position in the array. So if we're at, um, let's say we're at this two, and we subtract one, we get one. If we add three, we go one, two, three to one. So it works any position in the array. Adding three is the same as subtracting one mod four. So that is time to commit. Uh, turning left and right works. What I note is that these two functions now look even more similar, right? There's only this one number difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and refactor out that probability. I say const rotate is a function. Uh, it takes the number of turns, which is a number. It takes the heading, which is a heading. And it does exactly these two lines, except that we add turns here. So turn left becomes uh, rotate, uh, that is rotate three for heading. And we're still green, which means we can do the same for turn right. So it becomes rotate once for heading. And actually what I'm minded to do is uh, I want to carry out this. So this is a little bit too clever. You might not want to do this, but I'm going to say uh, rotate is a function that takes turns as a number. And it returns a function that takes heading. And it does that. So now we can say that turning left is rotating once. And turning right, sorry, turning left is rotating three times, turning right is rotating once. Should still be green, that's still green. Great. So, next step then, we've done turning left, we've done turning right. The only remaining behavior before we get into handling this input, the only remaining behavior is moving. So, I'm going to come in, I'm going to write myself a new test. Uh, when moving north, we should increment the y coordinate. Okay, so in our problem description, it says that we assume the square directly north from x y is x y plus one. So I am going to write another test again. I'm not going to create a rover type. I'm just going to write another tiny function like these ones, and we'll try and stick this all together at the end. I'm going to say expect move move isn't in my function i'm going to move north from the position one one and i expect that to equal uh one two okay so this is x and y coordinates and we expect it to increment the y coordinate that's going to fail move is not defined we're going to do the same trick again const move is a function it takes a heading Heading, 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 just a heading, and it takes um, some old x, don't care what, and it yields x. Okay, now this fails because it wanted 1, 2, but instead it got 1, 1. Quick is fix, 1, 2. Okay, so now we're green. We've made our design choices, okay? Our design choices are move as a function, it takes a heading, and it takes this tuple of x, y coordinates. And now the tests are green for that design. But obviously we haven't fleshed out any of the behavior. Let me uh, write another test. So when moving, um, let me see, when moving east, we should increment the x coordinate. So again, we're going to start off at 1, 1. 
This time we should end up at T1. We're moving east, we should increment the x coordinate. This fails because we expected T1, but we got 1, 1. Uh, no, we got 1, 2, because we're always returning this hard coded value. Fine. So, quickest way to fix this. What am I going to do here? Uh, same again, I guess. We're going to say if heading is um, north, then now I need to unpack that, don't I? So let's say, let's think about what we're doing here. So actually, we've got um, this X and Y. Firstly, I'm going to introduce a type for it. I'm going to say type coordinates equals x of number, y of number. This becomes um, position or heading, like so. That should leave me with one failing test still. Good, good. And then what I can do. That's not a heading, come on, Bob, wake up. That is a position of coordinates. Next, what I can do is I can say const x and y equal to position. If heading is north, then return x, y plus 1. Otherwise, we can return x plus 1, y. Where are we at? When moving east, we should increment the y coordinate, uh, the x coordinate, sorry. We didn't move east, we moved north again. There we go. Okay, so when moving east, we should increment the, y, the x coordinate. This function, it's fine. Same as the, like the move and the, the turn left and right earlier. I'm not in love with it, but we'll see where we get to. Maybe we can clean it up in a bit. Okay. So let's do the next two tests. I'm going to write them both once. But I'm going to skip one of them until I've managed to make it uh, this one pass. So when moving, um, let me see, when moving south, we should decrement the y coordinate. So we can start up at 1, 0. We expect to end up at 1, or at 1, 1. We expect to equal 1, 0. When moving east, so this is when moving west, we should decrement the x coordinate. We start off at 1, 1. We expect to end up at 0, 1. So you can see why I chose 1, 1, because I don't want to think right now about what happens when we move off the edge of the terrain. Okay, We've got one fail test, one skip test. So when moving south, we should decrement the y coordinate. So. Let's do this quickly. Um, want to get rid of that default return? I do. I do. So we're going to say if east return x plus 1 y. If heading is equal to uh, south return x plus y minus 1. We've done the same thing again. Yes, I have. We're still moving north. Now we're green. This time we're going to make sure I change this bearing before I run my tests. So when moving west, we should decrement the x coordinate. That fails. Expected 0, 1, but got undefined. That's because we just don't return anything in that case. So when heading is west, we want to return x minus 1, y. And we're green. Nothing much I can think of to clean this up. Um, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I don't really like the repeated if statements, but I think anything I did to try and clean it up would just make it more complex or longer. So I'm going to leave it as it is. We're going to commit our changes. Move works. Great. So at that point then we've got move we've got turn left we've got turn right what we don't have is any real sense of how we're going to get to being able to handle this input which is going to require us to parse a load of stuff and require us to you know like handle these strings that's okay 
what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to take the first step towards that and we're going to start to replace the tests that we've got with tests that operate at this higher level function that takes these strings of input. For now though, I'm going to go and get a coffee, stretch my legs. Um, I hope you'll join me in the second part. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.